Alright guys, well it could be the first frost of the winter of 23-24 uh, here in Denellum, Florida. We have not had frost yet, but we are looking at a frost advisory here at Doomsday Trailer. It's either going to happen tonight or it's not going to happen at all this entire winter. Not one frost in Denellum. Not that I'm complaining, I mean that's why I'm here, right? But anyway, it is a Monday night. It is an exciting Monday night. We have survived the big rain. And uh, Monday, good God, it is time for our weekly Dump the Trumpty High Roundup rant where we go on and make myself uh, borderline uh, projectile vomit where we divide up the uh, mainstream media and uh, medium.com uh, talking about people sick and tired of Trump but uh, this brand new this article just came out in the New York Times maybe uh, people are already sick of this rant New York Times this long article I can only I got 14, 14 uh, uh, of these to go through. Can't get very deep into any one. New York Times, fresh off the presses, anti-Trump burnout. The resistance says it is exhausted. It is only February, and, and the guy is just... Uh, it is exhausting. The, 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 the motherfucker is exhausting. Uh, we all know that he's th that he's going back to the fucking White House. We all know who is to blame for that. It's not MAGA's. It's Joe Biden is who we can blame for uh, Donald Trump going back in the fucking White House. Uh, take it away, New York Times. In 2017. They donned pink pussy hats to march on Washington, registered their fury with Donald Trump by the hundreds of thousands. Then they flipped the House from Republican control, won the presidency, and secured a surprisingly strong showing in the 22 midterms. Galvanized by their conviction that Donald Trump and his allies, meaning the MAGAs, constituted a national emergency. This year, anti-Trump voters, which is not the same as a Joe Biden voter. Okay, understand, an anti-Trump voter is not a pro-Joe Biden voter 90% of the time. This year, the anti-Trump voters are grappling with another powerful sentiment, exhaustion. Just fuck. This is Rebecca Lee Funk. The woman's name, her last name is Funk. Wouldn't you love to have the last name Funk, F-U-N-K? Some people get so lucky with their last names. Some folks are burned out on outrage, said Rebecca Lee Funk, the Washington-based founder of the outrage. Yes, people are tired. I think last election we were desperate to get Trump out of office, and folks were willing to rally around that singular call to action. This election feels different, close quote. But for Democrats, the mission is, sim is similar. Now defending the White House, President Joe Biden, you know, the one giving the White House away, is trying to reassemble that sprawling anti-Trump coalition, casting the 2024 contest as another battle to save American democracy as Trump moves toward the Republican nomination. <coughs> Biden, however, has <coughs> damn has a lot of work to do 
interviews with nearly two dozen Democratic voters, activists, and officials make clear his challenge in energizing Americans who are unenthusiastic about a likely 2020 rematch are worried about his age and in some cases are struggling to sustain the searing anger toward Donald Trump that Democrats have re relied on for nearly a decade. This is Shannon Case Bar 36. We're kind of like crisied out. Uh, she uh, called the prospect of a Trump-Biden rematch a, quote, dumpster fire, quote. She added, it's crisis fatigue for sure. Uh, and then it goes on. So anyway, guys, this is a long, uh, involved article. But uh, what a lot of this is about, guys, and I am one step uh, from, from turning the dump, the Trump the uh, hive uh, rant in, into j j just that. It's the number of Americans, uh, I, I don't give a fuck who they are, who are sick and tired of both of these motherfuckers that uh, they cannot believe. What was it? I don't think I have it here. Like, like some recent poll taken as a whole and averaged out between Democrats and Republicans that like 65% like of Americans just cannot believe. Can't fucking believe. 330 million goddamn people uh, in, in, in this country and, and, and we're looking at these two motherfuckers again. Uh, this unfucking believable that that people are sick and tired of, of this whole fucking bullshit uh, rigged political system that we have these two motherfuckers uh, going up against each other, which reminds me. So what? I don't. You know, I'm not one of these people who listens to these, la these late night uh, comedians, uh, but this is Stephen Colbert, uh, what, uh, from, uh, I don't even know, is that just the show named after him? I wouldn't know Stephen Colbert's voice if I heard it. Uh, <clears throat> what does he say? Uh, how, do, how does he describe the, uh, the election? Uh, okay. Colbert tried to put some perspective on the situation, you know, just the purely anti-Trump situation. He said, uh, while this some some damn report that came out last week may reinforce concerns about Biden's age, the 2024 choice will almost certainly come down to Biden versus versus Trump unless something drastic happens. Quote: Voters are just going to have to choose between a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory or a contemptible, malicious elderly rapist with a poor memory, he said. Which, which, which is exactly right. You know, this, uh, my, my rant, my Dump the Trump the Hive rant is, is not so much about the politics. As I've said, uh, the, the, I almost despise the politics of Joe Biden as much as I do the politics of Donald Trump. It's just the very thought uh, 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 of, of having to look at this fat-ass motherfucker 
and listen to me. This, this I, I, I am so fucking sick and tired of, uh, uh, of this motherfucker. So we're just going to jump right in to, uh, the, I was going to save this one until the very, I was going to close with this one. But let's just go ahead and bring it out. We're going to go over to uh, medium.com. Uh, for this one, a fellow I never heard from before, Andy Ostroy. Andy Ostroy, his uh, article today, this just came out today, I am so fucking tired of Trump. I guess actually it came out a couple weeks ago. Take it away, Andy. I'm so fucking tired of Trump. So sick of his incessant whining and complaining, exhausting, uh, exhausted by his non-stop attempts to subvert the rule of law, violate the Constitution, and undermine and destroy our very democracy. He's a sociopath, a monster, and a dangerous threat to our general safety and well-being. It is astounding that we are still dealing with him and his relentless bullshit that he once again is a nose hair away from the Oval Office where this time he's likely to burn America to the ground. He's like a fucking cancer that's ravaging the nation and everything it stands for. He's turned this country on its head, destroying so many norms, boundaries, and institutions. He has unleashed a torrent of anger, hatred, anti-Semitism, racism, and white nationalism, and he has single-handedly transformed the Republican Party from one that claimed to be the party of fate, law and order, national security, and patriotism into one that engages in the flagrant breaking of laws, the beating of cops, the alienation of our allies, and the enabling of our enemies, and the support for a democracy-raping dictator wannabe sociopath. So I try to focus on the big picture to keep my eye on the prize to filter out Trump's noise, because I truly believe, do believe it's all just noise. Trump notoriously tries his cases in the court of public opinion, but it's been the court of law where he's been smacked down consistently since 2020. More than 60 cases, a ton of motions, several appeals, and a fuckload of losses. And now, with four indictments on 91 felony accounts, it appears that the law is finally catching up to him. Uh, yeah, right. Dream on, brother. Uh, so he will continue to bitch and moan and whine nonstop about how much of a poor little victim he is, how unfairly he's being treated, how it's all rigged, a witch hunt, a big fact, all encompassing conspiracy <coughs> to take him down. Trump will continue to suck the oxygen out of this entire nation, and we'll have to keep hearing it, seeing it, and be subjected to his sociopathic rants, his bullying, and his relentless attacks on our democracy until his corrupt ass is finally convicted and either thrown in prison or gagged by the courts and prosecutors to shut the fuck up because he's copped a flea plea deal and must slink under a rock and silently spend his remaining days until he heads to his bed bug infested mar lago in the sky. Thank you, Andy Ostroy, for that uh, penetrating analysis of four more years uh, 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 of Donald Trump. But uh, I like this guy uh, on USA Today. 
uh, deciding uh, what's going to be the deciding factor in, in Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Looking at the two, whichever presidential candidate offers the best footwear gets my vote. <laughs> uh, it was good to see the 2024 presidential campaign settle into normalcy this weekend as Donald Trump took the traditional step of introducing a garish line of sneakers he can use to whittle down the half a billion or so dollars he owes for fraudulent business practices and other assorted crime doing. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the one thing thousand pairs of the $400 sneakers quickly sold out. Uh, Trump's various crimes means he's going to have to sell a lot of sneakers. He made $399,000 uh, on that first round, so he only needs to sell about $1,000,000 three hundred fifty two thousand three hundred eighty three more pairs and he'll be square uh, anyway uh, all MAGA lawmakers must wear Trump sneakers or face expulsion <laughs> uh, anyway I think that is a fine way to choose between Donald Trump and Joe Biden whoever offers the best footwear. Uh, I like this. Someone did a, a survey. This is Business Insider. Trump branded properties are selling for far less than buildings that removed his name, report says. Manhattan condos with Trump's name still on them sell for less than units without the logo, the New York Times reported. Trump Tower has seen a 49% drop in the average price per square foot of its condo since 2013. Meanwhile, analysis of sales data showed buildings that removed the logo have increased in value. Uh, but as long as we're talking about uh, 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 about New York City, and I honestly don't know. Uh, you know, when I when I finish this, I have to go over to Collapse Chronicles for my Good News Monday, and, and I don't know whether and I couldn't decide which one this uh, belonged in. So I guess I'll put it in both. Truckers for Trump. Truckers for Trump to boycott driving to New York City after $355 million fraud ruling. A group of truck drivers who support former President Trump have announced they will not be driving into New York City as a means of expressing their disappointment with the civil fraud judgment that fined Trump more than $350 million last week. Uh, Pro-Trump truck drivers across the country have not taken the ruling lightly. There you go. Yes. This is a trucker known as Chicago Ray. I'm just one of the many millions of truckers who believe in God and love this country. I stand with Trump because Trump stands with me. Truckers for Trump ain't just a slogan. It's real. There you go. Well, uh, I wish Donald Trump would stand in front of a, uh, a goddamn 18-wheeler. Oh, Jesus. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's just go see what other people. 
what is John Bolton uh, talking about? John Bolton issues warning over Donald Trump's legal debts and foreign autocrats. John Bolton, who served as a national security advisor to Donald Trump, on Sunday suggested that the former president may be targeted by America's foreign adversaries because of the amount of money he now owns, he now owes following civil court cases. Uh, uh, quote, <clears throat> I think this is one of the demonstrations why Trump really is not fit for office. He is consumed by these troubles. His family is consumed by them. And I think foreigners will try to take advantage of it one way or another. They may be doing it already. I'm not sure what all that means. So what is Michael Cohen's? What is one of his biggest fears? Oh, this is about if Donald Trump winds up behind bars, which is uh, not going to happen. Michael Cohen says Donald Trump's character and growing debts make him dangerous whether he's in the White House or behind bars. Quote, we need to be very careful about him as a potential president because he is for sale. He needs to figure out where he's going to raise 500 plus million dollars over a sh short period of time. Uh, Cohen suggested that a cash-strapped Trump could sell sensitive government information that he was privy, privy to before and after his presidency. Quote, one of the biggest fears I have about having Donald Trump behind bars is that he would sell this information for a bag of tuna fish or a book of stamps. He doesn't care about America. And I say this not to be hyperbolic. I say this as fact, knowing him for as long as I have known him, he will sell that information to anyone because he doesn't care about anyone or anything other than himself. Plain and simple. So, uh, what does Lawrence O'Donnell have to say about Donald Trump? Quote, every day of Donald Trump's life has been worse than the day before. Yes, Lawrence O'Donnell had biting words for Donald Trump. Uh, the MSNBC has made it clear Friday that Trump only has himself to blame. Do you think so? Um... Uh, Let's see, let's get to the uh, good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> in his ruling today, which cost Donald Trump and his children $464 million, including interest, Judge Engerin wrote, in order to borrow more and at lower rates, defendants submitted blatantly false financial data uh, to the incomp data to the incompetence resulting in fraudulent financial statements. Uh, when confronted at trial, uh, with the statements, defendants, fact, and expert witnesses simply denied reality and defendants failed to accept responsibility or to impose internal controls. That is the essence of this case. So, as of tonight, because of Donald Trump's stupidity and recklessness as a businessman and because of Donald Trump's utter depravity and raping E. Jean Carroll in the 1990s, 
Donald Trump now owns a total of $551 million in legally enforceable judgments against him in the state of New York. And we will see, of course, how all that plays out. Uh, let's see, did I already say Colbert? We're going, let's do two more. Let's go back over to medium.com. Here is Ray Katz. You are not going to believe this. You are not going to believe this. Uh, you know, if anyone had told me four years ago that it was going to be a Donald Trump, uh, Joe Biden, um, eh, oh God, uh, the sitting president, you know, the octogenarian will be running against a former president, a former president who was impeached twice, a former president who has insulted veterans, who is found legally guilty of sexual who assault, who was twice impeached, a former president who incited an insurrection live on TV in an attempt to retain his office after losing his in his first re-election attempt. Yeah, after all that, he's back, the disgraced ex-president, and he's popular enough to lead in the polls. That opens up the question, who is crazier, him or us? Now, the entire U.S. government and all its institutions prove to be incapable of stopping this guy. He's indicted and convicted multiple times for a variety of serious offenses, and he keeps going. Voters still support him. He is allowed to get his name on the ballot in all 50 states. I am not joking. All the while, this guy and his party behave like spoiled four-year-olds. <laughs> the the ex-president and his party play the victim. They have tantrums, and this childish behavior isn't met with appropriate response, which would be, go to your room and don't come back until you've learned how to behave. No, the immature adults acting just like children, they continue campaigning, continue lying and pouting and threatening and whining. Uh, anyway, and meanwhile, the apocalypse where he goes, uh, uh, all of this shit, now, I totally forgot uh, all of this rant that it's President's Day. Totally forgot the fact that it was, that it's President's Day today as we're uh, looking down the barrel uh, of a Donald Trump Joe Biden rematch on President's Day 2024. But anyway, oh, we, we're, we, we sort of started with Andy Ostroy. Uh, Andy has two of these, so we're going to close where Andy isn't talking directly about Donald Trump. We're going to let Andy Ostroy close with an open letter to magas or maggots, as I would care them, as I would call them, an open letter to magas. Look, I don't care if you absolutely love Donald Trump. I don't care if you think he should be president again. I don't even care that you piously worship him as your orange Jesus. But you need to stop pretending that you and your party represent anything even remotely resembling what the GOP used to be, what it used to stand for. What you are now is not only historically unrecognizable, but to borrow from my girl Hillary, deplorable.
and dangerous. You are not the party of fate and family values. You are not the party of law and order. You are not the party of fiscal responsibility. You are not the party of national security, and you are not the party of patriotism. No, not while you rack up $8 trillion in debt, not while you pledge undying cultish fealty to a sadistic, serial sinning, corrupt traitor, not while you laugh at the mocking of an old man's brutal beating, not while you laugh, uh, not while you want a rapist to be president again, not while you condone the beating and killing of cops, the defunding of the FBI, and think Trump should be able to use the military to assassinate his opponents without prosecution, not while you demean and degrade our independent judiciary and Department of Justice, not while you attack our free and open media, not while you call incarcerated insurrectionist hostages, not while you empower our enemies and alienate our allies, not while you flirt with fascism and fantasize about dictatorship. So just call it what it is. You are angry, angry that white people White men have lost a grip on the prestige, privilege, and power you've had when America was great. Because that's all make America great again really is, isn't it? It's to make America white again, male again, straight again. When blacks were in their place, women were in the kitchen, immigrants were in the fields, and gays were in the closet. So just embrace who you are. Own it. Be proud, but don't hide behind bullshit because we see right through your bullshit. Oh, God. Anyway, here I am from uh, Maga Central, uh, Donellan, Florida. I am in a uh, Mog essential, but, but I've got to say, guys, even here in this neighborhood, in this, and I'm on the trailer trash side of the tracks, uh, there is not one Donald Trump uh, yard sign. Now, I guess it's only February, but uh, there is not one single Donald Trump sign uh, in, in, in this neighborhood of, uh, of Magas in Donnellan, Florida, which uh, might be a best, the best sign is a lack of signs that, that I think uh, j just as the, uh, you know, just uh, as the Trump derangement syndrome sufferers are getting worn out, I'm actually thinking uh, that, 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 that these fucking maggots have to be worn out by this guy uh, at, at, at some point.